Welcome back to another Share Your Light episode. And this is where we get to showcase some of the people in our listening audience who are stepping into their power, their light, and their purpose. And I know that there is someone out there that is going to hear this and say, oh my goodness, this person really resonates with me, or that's the way I look at things. And the whole point is coming together in community and finding ways to support one another. And today we're really, really excited to welcome Susie. Susie is an intuitive and free thinker currently living in the Pacific Northwest with her husband and two kids. She's the host of this Spiritual Freedom Podcast, a podcast devoted to all things spiritual and metaphysical, where she holds space to normalize the weird of a spiritual journey and encourage the release of limiting beliefs and dogma. She's come a long way from a childhood of conservative religious beliefs in her home state of Texas, where she started her career as a corporate and insurance defense attorney. Susie now offers personal readings where she combines her intuitive and mediumship skills as well as astrology knowledge to provide spiritual and energetic help to others. She considers herself to be a spiritual cilantro. It's not for everybody, but if you don't mind a few F-bombs along with talking about spirituality, she's your kind of people. So welcome, Susie. It's such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you, Denise, for having me. I'm super stoked to be here. This is going to be fun. <laughs> it is going to be fun. And what's what's really cool is sometimes, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but it's a thing. Sometimes people have a stereotype in their mind of attorneys or lawyers, and you're everything that that's not. Thank God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love but it. I think, I, I think if you could just share a little bit on how, how you stepped out of, because God love you, girl, that's going from conservative, uh, yeah. a pretty traditional minded state and a very traditional background as far as your career choices. How, how have you worked that transition? Cause I know you still practice, right? but then you, you completely jumped your ass over the fence to, okay, now I'm going to be in this <laughs> world and talk about spirituality. And how did that even come to be? I mean, slowly over time, like it, I mean, it just took a little bit of internal wrangling for me to kind of release some dogma and some fears about stepping my foot into spirituality. And that's just because of my background. And kind of like once I did work through that, I just realized who I am and it just resonated. And when things started to resonate, when I got that feeling of like, you know what, I do like crystals, I do like. Um, the idea of feeling like God is inside me, it's not outside of me. All these things just kind of like opened my heart and I realized it hurts too much to go back to what I, I used to have my framework and I had to go forward. So it just became compulsory <laughs> at some point. And it, it just, yeah, it was too painful to to keep on doing what I was doing because it wasn't working with how I was having, you know, living life, inner peace. It was just a real difficult thing for me. And then just slowly, I just decided I'm, that's what I'm going to be. And, and there, there were some pointed discussions with, you know, maybe my partner at times that, you know, I am going to be this way. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we moved forward. And so, yeah, I, I mean, so I honestly, with my work, there's my work life zone. I still, uh, I, I am not unauthentic. I definitely could show up with my crystal necklace. I might say the phrase and I intuitively feel that we should blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I, I am incorporating and owning my spirituality more and more on a daily basis, but it's just, but yeah, it's just slowly over time, but definitely the spiritual freedom was just kind of like the seed that grew and grew. And I'm going to give you credit because it was a reading with you that I, I initially thought, and I kept quiet about a book and then I talked to you on a reading because I know we talked like a couple times a year and I just love, you love, I love getting readings with you. You're just so oh, gold. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, thank you. and you're like, how about a podcast? And you put that seed in me and then it just became a, a wildfire idea that I, I went for. And I'm so glad. I feel so holy in myself now and, you know, the anal retentiveness of <laughs> that I used to kind of get that energy of restraint and constriction. I'm just not in it anymore. I love it. Well, and that's what emanates through all of your work, not just the podcast, is you're very genuine, you're very true, what you see is what you get, but it always, always comes from a place of service. How can I help? How can I share something in my base of knowledge or in my treasure trove of things that I've learned over the years so that someone else can find that inner knowing within themselves? And I see that when you interact with other people. And, you, and so you the name of your podcast is Spiritual Freedom Podcast which I love. How did that come about? 
Oh, I can't remember exactly which day it was, but it was a, you know, I was just really lit on. Okay. So to finally do a podcast, like on my own, it did take some energy of when I stood in power in a couple of relationships, friendships in my life. And it was like, I am not worthy. I, I'm worthy more than this. Like I, I'm not, this is not going to work and kind of stood in my power. It's funny how that can kind of umph you and give you energy in all sorts of areas of your life. And so it pushed me forward on my podcast podcast. And it was like when I was powwowing for the, the, you know, the name that I wanted this to be, I mean, that was so much pressure, but I thought, what is it? I really want everyone to feel empowered to seek their own connection to God, to know that that is real, that it's valid, that it is unique. It's not going to be like anybody else's. We can't carbon copy each other on how we get connect with spirit. And it was like, I am done with the judgment. I am done with feeling embarrassed about it or like, it's not logical. It's, you know, it's not worth doing. And I, and I just was like, in this mad moment, I was like, I'm going to be free. And I thought spiritual freedom. <laughs> but, and, and that's, what's beautiful. You're not bashing anyone's choice of religion or their, their belief system, or there is none of that. This is more what it feels like when I've listened to your episodes. And when I've spoken with you, it's how to integrate that into something that feels like a true right. connection to spirit for you. And you can put God, you can put spirit, you can put Allah, you can put mm -hmm. whatever label you want my own personal belief, it all goes to the same place. And, right. and I, I think what you're doing though, is helping to, and I think I say this word a lot, but I don't know. I think you're helping to normalize the things that so many people feel in their heart about organized religion or spirituality, and that you don't, ha it doesn't have to be the end of the spectrum on either one, because right. that's another thing I love about you is you're not airy fairy woo woo. Not that there's anything wrong with that for the <laughs> airy fairies in the, in the, Right. Group, God but, bless. Uh, right. Because <laughs> I love it, them. It, it, yes. <laughs> and yes, I have my because, moments. <laughs> yes. We, we all have our airy fairy, I think. Yeah. But I think part of that too is bringing that balance into right. what you're offering people. And it's a very common sense podcast. It's very oh, much. Well, don't you find that as well? That this I, is. I hope so. <laughs> I really like that was my intention was like, really, let me brass tax it. Cause like there's some certain ways of describing spirituality that become too airy fairy for me. Cause I'm just, I am an earth-based person. I'm very mental. I've got my finance college degree. I've got my lawyer degree. I've got all these mental caps on. And then it took me a real conscious transition to bring things into my heart space. To do that process was like a, a mental process. Like I had to come up with a way of meditating that certain things meant, okay, I release judgment. Okay. This means I'm releasing fear. This means, you know, and then visualization. And so I have a really long podcast about how I meditate because I had a very intricate way of meditating because my mind wouldn't shut off. And I'll just say for anybody out there who thinks they can't meditate, right? They're usually the best freaking meditators out there. <laughs> they really I, are. It's just like, stick I with agree. it yeah. and find your little special and you're going to be better than anybody. <laughs> Mm -hmm. If competition, may <laughs> that if, sounds a little competitive. That, I don't a, mean no, no, if that's a motivator for you. <laughs> Just some, right? But it's okay. But no, I really don't want judgment. I feel like I had a lot of what is or isn't uh, uh, godly in growing up. And at some age, I just got so sick of it because there were things happening in my life that just didn't resonate with that. And I didn't want to lie to myself anymore. I knew I personally ble believed in reincarnation. One and done did not make sense to me on any freaking level. I could not be a literal translator of a Bible. And, and then I saw, like, for me personally, I could not see use of a savior as a connection to God. I have to go through my own soul, which is inside of me, which is from God. So therefore, it's right there inside of me. And I can't have any separation from God to feel that self-love wound, to really heal that. I can't have anybody between me and God. And I know we can kind of argue whether Savior is God, but I had it to be from me to source. And that it was just a little bit of my, probably my own personal wounding that I'm not trying to judge against anyone else who's having that experience. But, but for me, I had to kind of see it that way. And I know I felt very judged by having kind of some non-traditional thoughts about religion and spirituality. And I don't want to give it to anybody else. However, I, I think there's a balance. I'm always watching my energy that I am not too, like from my wound of recovery of being judged and being like, you know, screw that, you know, and too much anger coming through. <laughs> so I'm always trying to balance. <laughs> right. right. Did and I answer your question? <laughs> you, you did beautifully. And that kind of leads right into perfect segue into 
you know, you have some incredible thoughts about spiritual authority. Oh, Could you chat about that for a minute? Yeah, please? yeah. So for me, like I am still structured a little bit. And my and I, my husband always jokes with me. He's like, don't turn your non-dogma into dogma. <laughs> But there's a little structure here. And for me, I feel like it's a three leg, a uh, three footed stool where you've got the idea of how to protect yourself energetically because we are energetic beings. I identify myself as a soul, not as a human. I'm not the human form. I am literally a soul inside of me. So I'm energetic. So this protection is really important. Then you've got this stool of self-love, which is just as important. And that is like this whole thing. Like I had to see myself. I'm worthy by just breathing. I don't have to do good works, although my life is better by doing good works. And you learn your lessons and you have a better experience next time. That's my own personal stuff coming out here. So take what resonates for y'all, those who are listening. Mm-hmm. But but this self-love is so key. It's like we have to feel empowered and and like like pure. And we just tap in. It's not the mental brain that makes mistakes it's that I'm tapping into, but it's the soul that's inside of me. That's the self-love component. And then you've got the manifestation part, which is this co-creation, this, I can create ceremony with God. I can, I can like, I can think about what is in my heart and like bring it out into 3d and 3d world and like see it before my eyes and it's magic. And I'm working with God and it's beautiful. All three of those things lead to this stool, I guess, of spiritual authority that we stand on. And that spiritual authority gets stronger, but the more and more that we, we address these wounds, that we do actions that are based in alignment of our soul with these tasks, you know, and we just, we get stronger. And then our energetic presence on the earth heals others around us. And the more of us that are in that state, the better, (laughs) like we need peace. We don't need more fighting here. Well, I agree. And I thank you because that really is, it's a clear indicator of who you are and why you're doing this work. But it's also, I think, going to resonate with a lot of people who are listening, who are trying to find that balance between the two worlds. And and that's huge right now. It doesn't make it right, wrong, indifferent. It just makes it your personal connection with. So do you feel that you're using the term God? Do you feel that God is a, a critical component into the messages that you bring through in a reading or through, you know, whether you're using uh, the tarot or you're working as a medium or doing journey work or trance work. So huge. And so for me, like for me, more than anything, I set intention with like everything I do. It's part of my protection part, like intention, intention, intention. Like it's, it's, I, and my biggest is that every day I am aligned with God, you know? And when I say God, I mean like the pure creation force this benevolent good. It is all good. Like it is just pure love and peace and forgiveness and all those, you know, beautiful adjectives. And that is what I'm connecting with. And I hate even seeing it outside of my body. Like I'm at that mm-hmm. point now where I don't even want to see it in heaven. I want to see it within my soul, inside of myself, that, that, that source is that close and within me that I connect to it. And I bring it in everything I do, trying, you know? <laughs> Which, you know, you're right, we're all a work in progress, but do you feel that because of your connection with God and and all that is and source, is that a big part of what you're hoping to bring through for people that you work with? Oh, God, yeah. (laughs) 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 But yeah, I mean, the thing is, we think we're alone. And that's the biggest lie. And I mean, that's the test. Right. I mean, I don't want to sound like God's a big tester. And I don't like that energy of that, but because that's reminded me of the Old Testament when I was a kid and I didn't like certain things from that. But I mean, isn't this a beautiful thing if that we were souls and then we come down here as a little ribbon of that soul in this the human experience, this meat suit for a very short amount of time, may I add? And will we wake up to the power within us? Will we wake up and see how much was just right there? And it's not far away and how much good we can connect to and love and peace. Like it's not far away. It's just a belief away. And I feel like that so strongly can change our world on the 3D level. So incredibly hugely. Like I almost want to cry. Like I tap into this and I'm like, and it's so true for everybody. And we create so much dogma that creates lines and barriers, things that we can't do or don't have money to do. And it's like wrong. It is free. The kingdom of God was just within. So that's the one Bible verse that you will hear me say a lot <laughs> on my podcast. But I, I, I believe that that is just, that's the truth. And we only had to breathe 
And it's the nature of the soul. We are going to return. We got a return ticket. It's the nature of the soul. We came from God. We're here in this meat suit. We're ribboned here. And our, I feel always point to my heart space, like that's the connection point, my heart chakra. And the moment the meat suit is done, God bless it. Our, it's like a bungee cord. We go return to sender. And yeah, there might be some discussions, <laughs> but, and there's some energetic levels in my, my idea of, he- of heaven. But again, like that God connection is right there. And all we have to do is remember to align to it. And it's not even far away, y'all. It's not in heaven. I don't even see it far away. I, like I get so passionate if you hear me like suddenly. <laughs> I just feel it. It is so close. And I am I probably har- harp on that a little too much. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's not harping because of what I'm running through my mind is that you grew up in a conservative religious mm-hmm. background where there were certain expectations of this is right. This is wrong. This is right. okay. This is not. And you're honoring that in other folks, whatever their belief system is, which is great. But you found a way for that to work with you in a way that fits who you've always been. And I think that that's really, really important for so many of the people listening is that many, many of us had questions about some of the religious things in our lives or some of the expectations societally or culturally or whatever that might be. And now during this time of transition, the world is going through, we're all saying, but that doesn't work. This feels better for me. And it's not... Mm -hmm. It is not being hands over the ears, la, 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 denial, I can't hear you. It's more opening up to how much more we're capable of doing if we make that connection with spirit. And it's daily work. This is spiritual work, (laughs) W-E-R-K. I mean, we are like, (laughs) it is, I mean, the 3D experience is a heavy energy and we've got coming at us emotional, physical, mental stuff. I'm like, we've got so many dimensions and, and spiritual, right? So if you just do four, I add a fifth because I feel like our connection to the earth is just, mm-hmm. we're here for a reason, like yeah. an energetic thing that is a very sacred thing to me. So I have five basically dimensions of our experience. That's heavy. It's hard enough to do the emotional, especially as a woman. And, and then if you get your empathic and you're already sensitive to it, oh my God. And we don't do energy management. We don't. We allow people to run us over. We overserve. We don't love ourselves. We put others above us. There's all these dogmas <laughs> that we are mm-hmm. just subconsciously into that we don't realize need a conscious correction. You have right. to be conscious about those things. I'm sorry. I kind of drabbled off about. No, 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 no. That's, that's really important. <laughs> but it's work. It's daily work. And I, I tell you, I, str- I struggle with it. And that, that's basically a lot of what my podcast is. My daily struggle with the spiritual work too. But I think that's exactly what people are looking for is, does anyone understand why I feel this way or I'm thinking this way or Mm -hmm. how I can break free from the conditioning and patterning of the way I was brought up? The other part of your work that that I love is that you're really into astrology. Oh, my God. And how how do you weave that in as well? Because that's a whole practice in itself, but you kind of blend it into all of the things that you offer, which is fantastic. Oh, thank you. And, you know, astrology just lit me up on another level. At some point when I started paying attention to my, all right, I don't know, hit my attention at some point and I decided to look at my birth chart and I started researching on my own YouTube, just kind of like, what does, you know, sun and third house mean? And it's communication, a lot of communication. What does this mean? It just, things like resonated for me. And then I learned more about transits. And when I saw that certain transits and solar return energy started to mirror in my life, I realized well, duh, the birth chart is basically that picture of the stars, the moment you're on, you know, being born in earth. And it is just like this little snapshot of kind of like the energies you came into, the the struggles you you might have, the talents that you have. And then based on when the, you know, of course, because the planets didn't stop when Susie was born <laughs> and uh-huh. then they keep coming around, yeah. you know, the transits, when you compare it to your natal, it's just like, it showed me so much reson- resonating, like things that would happen in my life. And I just thought how beautiful that God would give us a little hint. Like mm-hmm. even the stars talk to us. We're that connected, like in everything, like the universe. And I just felt so seen. So just, I don't know, loved on. And so it's a real like heart space for me when I, when I look at someone's chart, because all of a sudden my, my intuition, my guides will start being like, you need to check out Saturn. <laughs> you need to go do this. You need to go look at their uh, progress chart, actually. Go see what's hitting that. You know, it's just, and it's like, I love how I can use my intuition now with kind of something a little bit more logic brain, which my logic brain likes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, I had the finest degree in the legal career forever and I'm, I'm still in it, but it's like, I'm very much have that 
inclination. And so it kind of satiates that. And then I can bring my intuition. I can show people who maybe need to see that kind of involvement too. Cause I understand it's like, you know, to move your face from one to another, sometimes we need a little, uh, I don't want to call it hard evidence, but you know what I mean? It does say something. No, but it is. And I mean, you can track that back hundreds and hundreds of years where that was a very revered profession and, you know, being an astrologer, which Mm -hmm. is fantastic. So it, but it also, you're right. It, it feeds that linear part of your brain that Mm -hmm. wants to say, oh, this is happening because this is in alignment with that, which is, but then you're able to drift over to the other side and blend them to the two together beautifully. Yeah. And and I always feel like it's an, oh, thanks. And I feel like it's reflective energy or available energy. I never feel too predictive. So I'm always careful on how I kind of view it, but I do want to, I always find it curious and it's definitely available. You definitely get certain bursts in certain areas of your life and you can see that coming in your upcoming transits or solar return. So it's really interesting. I love it. So I bring I can, that into my reading. So yeah. So two things on that th- is that there's a person in my life who has been one of my greatest teachers. You can read that as, you know, is that one of the biggest pains in your ass? Or is that just <laughs> someone who has, you know, lit the way for you? And you can fill in the blank with whatever you want. But what I think is interesting is that person, as I said, one of my greatest teachers, but then I made friendships later on at different different parts of my life with two people. One person has the same exact birth date. And one has the birth date like within a day or two. So on some way, I think spirit is saying to me, okay, you couldn't work it out with this person, but we're going to give you that same personality type, those same (laughs) dynamics so that you can practice on it over here. So it's not completely lost on you. But the other part that I think for, for those of us, I try really hard to remember astrology, to learn it. It doesn't click for me. But when I speak with someone who knows about it, it's like, oh, that makes sense. I love that you never focus on it with rigidity of, oh, your Venus is there. That means right. this, this, and this is always going to happen to you. <laughs> because right. I think it falls still falls under that umbrella of subject to change and free will. That, right. Yes, you might have a blueprint, but that doesn't lock you into, oh, no, you have to stay in these narrow parameters. Exactly. You know, I've got Uranus on my ascendant, so I cannot, I do not like predestination. Like I like a lot of free will. Don't, you know, hedge me in. So I always take that kind of, and I believe that with spirituality and like any belief system, it's like, we cannot have closed fists. We have to have, That's good. we got to have this open energy. You know, when you start getting into limitations and rules and that kind of stuff, it's that kind of energy. I'm just squishing my hands into fists right now. And it's like that with astrology, I kind of have to take it as like available energy, um, talents, maybe this might come. You've got, but it's like awareness is like preparation. You can kind of be ready for it. And in your higher timeline and highest vibe versus, oh, shit, I got surprised. <laughs> I mean, some things are meant to be surprised, though. But anyway, but yeah. but I, I think that that's what makes working with you so unique is that you are able to blend those all together. Oh, and thanks. you also do Oracle and readings and tarot mm-hmm. readings. And uh, so you do this on YouTube. Yep. And, so and people can find you there as well. Yes. But the other important part, what what do you feel like your whole hope is with all of this because we've we've talked on and on and on about spirit is calling us up yeah it's time to step up and help what can I do to help someone else and it's interesting you say that soul light within that that's your connection to God because my that's how when I start to get really judgy pie or upset with the world Mm -hmm. I have to reprogram my mind to Denise everybody has that seed of light and you're choosing to see it or you're choosing not doesn't mean it's not there because this is a big jump. You you still work full time, you're raising children, you have a right. family, you're you're a very busy person, but then this spirituality part of who you are has become this other whole aspect. Yeah. And what <laughs> where's it going, Susie? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I'm going to see what, what spirit throws at me, what universe throws love at that. me, but, but to be honest, cause I'm really flowy about it, but um, you know, I love to idea of one time at one point, uh, maybe next year, I'm thinking just lightly about creating a community an online community. Cause I got a lot too, out of being on the moon lodge, Jen Edwards moon lodge online community and cr- contributing there too, is with some moon Oracle and just the people I've met were just incredible. It's just that, you know, if I want to go talk about my spiritual belief, I don't want to usurp anybody's <laughs> platform. So I'm like, well, maybe I'll mm-hmm. commit, I'll commit one day to do a community. If not, like I always thought, you know, workshops are great. You know, when we can get away from our norm, 
we just are in a different headspace. I do some solo trips a lot. I'm very kind of independent in general. And I like my little alone time a lot, (laughs) but I also don't like that you have to spend money, uh, too much money to get this. So I do want to have kind of like the, the presence of the the YouTube to maybe do some zoom classes, start with the protection stuff later on this fall. I just want a lot of people to, to know how much, um, power they have and it's right inside. And, and just, I mean, it's just a belief. It's a head turn away. Um, so I don't know. I mean, sacred travel, I'm like a crazy wild card. I'm totally don't, I don't know where honestly this is going to (laughs) head, but that's the beautiful part of it is it, that is perfect because it allows it to grow and evolve and unfold in a way you may not even be aware of yet because there's also, you know, writing projects, there's class, there's so many other things. But right now it feels like, as I've said before, they're putting out the the Hansel and Gretel breadcrumbs for you and you keep finding the community. And you're right, working with Jen, Jen is a huge ray of light as well. It's putting yourself out there and saying, this is my truth. And I think that that's really, really important. Yeah, I think there's an energy about, I don't know if I call it the witch wound, but it's like, you know, if I can lessen the energy of being the one of the people that start saying, you know, I don't quite believe in the dogmatic Christian or any sort of religious, organized religion. I want to do it this way. And I want to, you know, and I start talking about my weird way. And then the next person's like, you know what? I listen to this person and you know what? That's giving me a little oomph to kind of like get on my weird way. And boy, the more we have out there of the weirdos, let's get out. I just feel like (laughs) let's let the healing begin. (laughs) Let's get our just unique spiritual selves out there because there are others out that are like us. Like there's some like me, there's some who are listening, who haven't, who haven't even thought about doing a podcast. There's more like you out there. You should start your own podcast. The more we are at the table, the more we are heard, the more our energy is spread across, the more healing happens across the world. I don't want my place to be taking over anybody else's. I just want to have, I just know I can't have to have my voice out there. I want more people up. Do you know what I mean? Like we all like, I want the sisterhood brotherhood out there. (laughs) I mean, you know, I mean, say those things in a good way. Yes. (laughs) Spiritual, spiritual sisterhood, (laughs) spiritual brotherhood. Sorry. (laughs) Like I need to qualify that. (laughs) But that's the whole point is you're you're not limiting this to certain of a, uh, people of a certain demographic or age right. or preference mm-hmm. or anything else. This is more geared towards where we're a species, we're human beings on the planet. How can we help right. each other out and hold space? Yes. And right now we've got a lot of scarcity shit going on. Excuse me, my language on that, but um, oh. you know what I mean? The goods are hard to find. Um, if we find them, they're like three times more expensive than they were last time. Hard to, hard to find housing. It's a tough energy right now. We are in astrologically a very tense, you know, until March and maybe there's some more coming. And it's like, we have to figure out how to hold it y'all spiritually And we need to find what works for you before anything happens in terms of like a pressure point in your life. I'm not talking about big, you know, I'm talking about just pressure in your life where, you know, sometimes we live just under normal like work and we feel like we're just on that blade. We're on that blade already. Like I am so, I could just, you know, be too mad in a parking lot and yell at somebody, you know, that energy, like we, we we're in that kind of world and we have to learn how to like find our own way of chilling out finding our Zen and connecting with God. So we, you aren't being brought down to this negative energy that's kind of around us. And we, that, that, that energy only gets healed when we rise, to be honest. That's that's beautiful. I mean, you have to have a foot in both worlds to, for this to truly. Right. And and you do. And I only mean the scarcity thing, because that is like how you, if you view it as scarcity, then you can get in that fear, that fear um, energy. Right. My point is like, we do know that there are things, but I am not bothered by it because I see myself as guided by source in my life. Mm-hmm. So I don't have any concern. I don't. My ego mind might pop in there with a couple of things. And then I have to work through those limiting beliefs and tell myself, I have, I am divinely led by God. It's all going to work out. And, and there's other practices, but it's like those, that's the real life part that I think pops up for a lot of people and they get fearful and they're living lives in a fear energy and that doesn't help them on their spiritual path. And, and that's what I mean. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to talk about scarcity to make, to make that a fear point. I just mean like, it's kind of changed, but we don't need to, to be clinging onto that energy. No, but it also is a huge factor in why so many people are hesitant to step more fully into 
what they know in their heart they came here to do right. or they want to do is because will I be able to take care of myself? Will there be enough? What if, what, what if might, could, should, would, which is really relevant right now with the way the world is, but it's also your prime example of it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You can live right. this lifestyle and embrace it and explore it and let it grow and still right. have your other life that you're, you're being a, a, a mom, a partner, a, an attorney, all of those things. It's, it's not an all or nothing. And I think in reality, that makes the perfect balance for where things are going versus I can't, oh, if I'm going to leave, live a spiritually based life, I can't have a car payment. I mean, it, it, right, it right. is. <laughs> right. And, and to be honest, I've had many years as a clandestine spiritual person where I've had crystals in my bra when I was a prosecutor <laughs> in my hearings on the coast. I'm just mm-hmm. like, you know, loaded up with my little crystals and my, my briefcase and no one knows. I mean, I, I would not, I would listen to people on social media or list, watch things, but I would never subscribe because Lord, I didn't know if you could kind of tell from my profile what I've watched by other people. So I really, because in Texas, you in the legal system, our judges are politically, um, uh, they run on a ticket, uh, Republican or Democrat. And um, so in my livelihood would be very connected to how they saw me. <laughs> So right. I had to watch a little bit of this line extremely carefully by being in, in the spiritual world. And I only got freedom by this newer job, which literally, literally is just the, a big company. I'm in-house. I don't have litigation. I don't have to deal with judges. So I'm much more free. I happen to have a sweet spot as an attorney to be able to be a little bit more authentic than I think a normal litigation person with judges who are, you know, you've got partners in a firm, you've got those dynamics. It's a little different in certain careers. It, de- it definitely is. So my heart goes out to those who are in clandestine status, status mode <laughs> mm-hmm. and you are not living a lie. You're doing what you need to do. We need people who are spiritual in law, in medicine, in, in education. We know you're there and you're our little hidden spiritual warriors and you keep doing the job. You keep it up and don't be ashamed about it. You're doing what you can do just because that's that's how you make your money. And I, I get that. It's your career. It's your love. I don't want people to feel bad too by not being totally out. Like I get right. that. <laughs> right. And but this many times, it does not matter what closet you come out of. You really have the same fears of will I be shunned, yep. ostracized, ridiculed, hurt. But you know, and and I think for so many. That fear is so ingrained, going back to what you said earlier right. about the, the the fairly strict and conservative upbringing. Mm-hmm. And you're right. It, it isn't limited to whether a judge is Republican or Democrat and you're a litigation person. It comes back to, are you in a safe environment to really let people see that side exactly. of you? Which comes back to that importance of building community where you have, if you can find one person or one podcast or one blog you read or anything that you can say, wow, they think like me. I think like that. They get the way I am. Right. Personally, I really think that's what we're all looking for right now. Right. Is, exactly. Is to not feel so alone during these times of change. Exactly. It's, it's just a tough road right now. And that's okay. Like it's, you know, that's why we signed up for this. We, we did it because we're strong enough to, it just doesn't mean it's easy, but it's the work and we're not going to regret it later if we just keep high vibe about it. So, See, and that, that is so beautiful. So we already mentioned that people can find you on your website, spiritualfreedompodcast.com, where you offer tarot, oracle, and astrology readings. And I love this description. These readings are like spiritual life coaching rather than fortune telling. And I think that that is so beautiful because it's it's more of an interactive experience that helps you look at all these different aspects of your life, not just, oh, in January of 2023, you're going to do this, this, and this, because that's that's funneling someone in a direction and not opening up to, to the choice and free will. You're a contributor and member of the Moon Lodge, which is Jennifer Edwards' astrological and spiritual online community. And on that site, Susie gives moon readings, moon energy readings for the collective, yes. and which I think is wonderful. You can find Susie on multiple platforms, YouTube, where she does even more energy readings, Facebook and Instagram, all under the Spiritual Freedom podcast name. 
And you can find her podcast on Apple, Google, and Spotify. There is a planned offering for some Zoom classes later this fall. So yes. keep, keep your eye on her, her website because <laughs> you know what I really love about Susie is that everything we've talked about is from her heart. She's very genuine. She's very true. None of this is about, ooh, pick me, pick me. It's more, how can I be of service to help you find that inner knowing and light within yourself so that you can feel empowered to truly embrace the life you came here to live. And it's it's really so obvious if you spend any time with her, how true that that statement really is for her. Oh, so you um, made me want to cry. No, <laughs> thank you, Denise. You're welcome. And you know me well enough that I'm honest mm-hmm. to a fault. So I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. But oh. so again, spiritualfreedompodcast.com. If you want a really kick-ass reading, you should reach out to Susie on that (laughs) website and book something. And Susie has very generously offered our listeners spiritualfreedompodcast.com. And what's the offer, Susie? It's 25% off. Listen to me. I sound like Gaines Wright (laughs) announcer. But (laughs) But yeah, just mention Denise and then just say Denise is rad in the email. And that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. So that's 25% off any of your services? Yep. Anything. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's so generous. And see, if that is a little more incentive to check out Susie's work, holy shit, I don't know what is. All right. (laughs) Thank you, Susie. Oh, thank you. Thanks to everybody listening. Oh, me too. I feel it. My heart just feels it. And everybody just know you're beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. I don't know. But like finishing with a cheesy thing, but it's true. No, it's not cheesy because it goes back to, now I'm going to drift again for a minute. (laughs) It goes back to treating ourselves the way we've treated other people for so long right. and, and turning that light inward a little bit and saying, well, I really do deserve to be loved or cherished mm-hmm. or valued. And I can build that up in myself so that I can share it with someone else yeah. and help them find it. And That's it, if, man. If it's cheesy, then. Yeah. Give me the cheese. <laughs> yeah. Crack open the wine. I mean, right. I, don't, I don't know what to say. Make it a night. I, yeah. <laughs> um, but. Thank you so much. And, and please keep doing what you're doing because you are absolutely incredible. Oh, we, thank we appreciate you, you so much. Same okay. here. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you all for listening again. Please share your light. And remember, you never know the difference that you're making in someone's life. Take care.